Do you have a sense of what is that base layer physical reality? You have like, uh, so you have these attempts at the theories of everything, the very, very small of like string theory or what um, Stephen Wolfram talks about with a the hypergrass. These are these tiny, 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 tiny objects. And then there is more like quantum mechanics that's talking about objects that are much larger, but still very, very, very tiny. Do you have a sense of where the tiniest thing is that is like at the lowest level? The turtle at the very bottom. Do you have a sense? I, I don't that think that is. you can talk about where it is because space is emergent over the activity yes. of these things. So space, uh, the, the coordinates only exist in relation to the um, things, other things. And so you could, in some sense, abstract it into locations that can hold information and trajectories that the information can take between the different locations. And this is how we construct our notion of space. Yeah. And uh, physicists uh, usually have a notion of space that is continuous. And this is a point where I uh, tend to agree with people like Stephen Wolfram, who are very skeptical of the geometric notions. I think that geometry is the dynamics of too many parts to count. And um, <laughs> when there are no infinities, if there were two infinities, you would be running into contradictions, which is in some sense what uh, Gödel and Turing discovered mm -hmm. in response to Hilbert's call. So There are no infinities. There are no infinities. Infinities fake. There is unboundedness, but if you have a language that talks about infinity, at some point the language is going to contradict itself, which means it's no longer valid. In order to deal with infinities in mathematics, you have to postulate the existence in, uh, initially. You cannot construct the infinities. And that's an issue, right? You cannot build up an infinity from zero. But uh, in practice, you never do this, right? When you perform calculations, you only look at the dynamics of too many parts to count. And uh, usually these um, numbers are not that large. They're not Googles or something. The, big, uh, the infinities that we are dealing with in our universe are mathematically speaking relatively small integers. And um, still, what we're looking at is dynamics where um, a, a trillion things behave uh, similar to 100 trillion things or uh, uh, um, something that is very, very large because mm -hmm. they're converging. Yeah. And these convergent dynamics, these operators, this is what we uh, deal with when we are doing the geometry. Right? The geometry is stuff where we can pretend that it's continuous because uh, as if we subdivide the space sufficiently uh, fine-grained, uh, these things approach a certain dynamic. And this approached dynamic, that is what we mean by it. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that infinity would work, so to speak, that you would know the last digit of pi and that you have a physical process that rests on knowing the last digit of pi. Yeah, that, that could be just a p peculiar quirk of human cognition that we like discrete. Discrete makes sense to us. Infinity doesn't. So in terms of our intuitions. No, the issue is that uh, everything that we think about uh, needs to be expressed in some kind of mental language, not, ne not necessarily a natural language, but some kind of mathematical language that your neurons can speak that refers to something in the world. And what we have discovered is that uh, we cannot construct a notion of infinity without running into contradictions, which means that mm -hmm. such a language is no longer valid. And I suspect this is what uh, made Pythagoras so unhappy when somebody came up with the notion of irrational numbers before it was time, right? There's this myth that he had this person killed when he blabbed out the secret that not everything can be expressed as a ratio between two numbers, but there are, yeah. there are numbers between the ratios. The world was not ready for this. And I think he was right. That has confused mathematicians uh, very seriously because these numbers are not values, they are functions. Right, so you can calculate these functions to a certain degree of approximation, but you cannot pretend that pi has actually a value. Pi is a function that would that generates, approach this value right. to some degree, but nothing in the world rests on knowing pi. Hmm. Uh, how much? How important is this distinction between discrete and continuous uh, for for you to get to the bottom? Because there's a, I mean, in discussion of your favorite flavor of the theory of everything. There's a few on the table. So there's string theory, there's uh, there's particular, there's uh, loop quantum gravity, which focus on one particular unification. Uh, there's, there's just a bunch of favorite flavors of different people trying to, uh, to propose a theory of everything. Um, Eric Weinstein, 
and a bunch of people throughout history. And then, of course, Stephen Wolfram, who I think is one of the only people doing a discrete. No, no, there's a bunch of physicists who do this right now. And okay. uh, like um, uh, Toffoli and Tomasello and um, uh, the uh, digital physics is something that is, I think, growing in popularity. But uh, the main reason why this is interesting is um, uh, because it, uh, it's important sometimes to settle disagreements. I don't think that you need infinities as all, at all and you never needed them. You can always deal with very large numbers and you can deal with limits, right? We are fine with doing that. You don't need any kind of infinity. You can build your computer algebra systems just as well without believing in infinity in the first place. So you're okay with limits? Yeah. So basically a limit means that something is behaving pretty much the same uh, if you make the number larger, mm -hmm. right? Because it's converging to a certain value and at some point the difference becomes negligible and you mm -hmm. can no longer measure it. And uh, in this sense, you have things that... Uh, yeah, if you have an n-gon which is, has enough corners, then it's going to behave like a circle at some point, right? And it's only going to be in some kind of esoteric thing that cannot exist in a physical universe that you would be talking about this perfect circle. And now it turns out that it also wouldn't work in mathematics because you cannot construct mathematics that has infinite resolution without running into contradictions. So uh, that is itself not that important because we never did that, right? It's just a thing that some people thought we could. And this leads to confusion.